Aveva il vino spumeggiante nel bicchiere scintillante. Hello, this is Franco Tanelli and this is Science of Singing. In this video I will show you the brief history of vocal technique, starting with ancient Greeks up to today. We know that ancient Greeks knew three types of teachers, namely Voci Ferraril, teachers working on voice strength and range, Fonasci, they work on the further embellishments of the voice or resonance teachers, and Vocales, teachers that worked on correct intonation and phrasing, or we can call them coaches as we do today. At that time, we clearly see that ancient coaches worked only on interpretation and correct pitches and never touched technical aspects that were given to voce ferraril or fonasis. Voices were separated into three types, netoide, high voice, able to improvise or sing free arias or tunes, mesoide, middle voice for singing popular songs and choirs, Iratoid, low voices that performed tragedies. Nothing at all known about technical side because traditions were oral. Now moving from ancient Greeks to Giuseppe Zarlino, 1517-1590. From his Institutione Harmonicae or Foundations of Harmony, he describes voice as following. We need two natural instruments, lungs and throat. Lungs, like bellows, pull air in and blow through our throat where air starts to shake in so-called arteria vocale, created especially for that function by God himself. Lodovico Zacconi, 1555-1627, was an Italian-Austrian composer and musical theorist of the late Renaissance and early Baroque eras. He worked as a singer, theologian, and writer of music in northern Italy and Austria. For the time, he was an employee of Archduke Karl of Graz and worked in Graz and Vienna. In his Pratica di Musica, I found that among head and chest voices, I prefer chest ones. But I have to admit also that chest voices are often shorter in range. The next sentence I read, we have to be careful not to scream, but sing. Zacconi separates voices into voce di testa, voce di petto, and mezzane. Voce di petto, or open chest voices, are those voices that are that give us impression that even head sounds seem to be flowing from the chest. They give much more pleasure than the head voices and never bore us. Natural voice is the chest voice, not because it resonates in the chest, but because they never produce falsehood. Zacconi also insisted that apart from open and closed vowels, there are semi-open vowels like mezzo aperte, like Vowels E or O. Giulio Caccini, 1551-1618, also known as Giulio Romano, was an Italian composer, teacher, singer, instrumentalist, and writer of the very late Renaissance and early Baroque eras. He was one of the founders of the genre of opera. He is also considered one of the single most influential creators of the new Baroque style. He was also the father of the composer Francesca Caccini. Student of Scipiona della Palla was the founder of modern opera. His famous aria Amarilli is still popular after 500 years. Caccini doesn't give an instruction of the type of breathing. He recommends free and light breathing that can serve a singer in all circumstances. Caccini prefers natural chest voices that can produce full voice to the voce finte, 
We see Caccini was first to introduce falsetto, as we understand it, or a false voice. Yeah? Caccini thinks that the singer should choose the key of the aria he performs to his convenience, because by doing that, singers achieves an ultimate beauty. Francesco Durante, 1684-1755. He says nothing much about technique in his work, except that he talks about convenient vowels during fast vocal passages, meaning that he was the first known teacher who suggested modification of the vowels during the fast vocal passages. Michael Pretorius, 1571-1621, wrote Syntagma Musicum, he wasn't a singer himself, but dedicated his works to vocal music and voices. He was the first who put the standard to Camerton pitch as 424. He insisted on that pitch because he thought higher Camerton pitch destroys tenor voices. Among other things, he said that singing high is not beautiful at all, plus one cannot even hear what they're singing about. We can see that virtuoso singing at the time was not yet so popular. Words had importance because opera was drama in music. At the end of the 18th century that changed. Drama in music was replaced by concerts in costumes. Famous schools of singing were Bolognian, Pistocchi and Bernacchi, and Neapolitan, Porpora. Porpora opposed the unnecessary virtuosity of his colleagues Pistocchi and Bernacchi and tried to make singing more noble and less coloratorial. Porpora is also famous for his Porpora list of exercises with that he for five years taught Caffarelli. Pietro Tosi, 1647-1721, wrote Opinioni. In his Opinioni, Pietro Tosi gives important statement about vocal intonation as opposed to clavichord and organ tempered tunes. Majority of singers and musicians, he says, don't know that they are two semitones, small semitone and big semitone, that are indistinguishable in organs or any tempered instruments. Singers should consider a correct intonation as opposed to tempered intonation. I always stated in my programs that a pianist's ear is different from vocalist's ear, or violinist's ear, for example, and is more correct in essence than a pianist's ear. The tempered intonation were created artificially, for your knowledge. Pietro Tosi is the first singer teacher to mention registers as something separate from monogamous voice, but mentions that connections between registers like chest or falsetto should be done the way we don't hear the separation. He also mentions that voices should not have either nasal or throat inequalities. Tosi dedicated his studies mostly for castrati and sopranos. He was also the first teacher who advocates less scooping. Scooping, or scivolo, is pleasant when used rarely and mostly when singer sings down the phrase. He emphasizes the importance of words is in all of his tones, like I don't take a breath in the middle of the word or even a phrase. He also mentions the importance of singing piano and forte, but insists that forte is more important. By forte he means full voice. Those who sing piano have more chances of losing voices than those who practice forte, full voice. He also emphasizes on the importance of self-knowledge and self-learning. He says, the best singer in the world is the one who is his own student and his own teacher. From his statements, you can see how musically educated were singers at that time. That's what he writes. The singer should be able to interpret arias. By interpretation, he means ability to improvise on the written material. Vocalist that is not able to vary his arias, improving everything he sings, cannot be considered a great vocalist. He applies to ancient practice. Ancient best artists were able to improve and vary not only arias and recitatives, 
they were able to change them every night. He questions readers. Can you find anybody today in the audience that is affected by singing emotionally? He answers himself, no. Today's superficial joyful singing may cause admiration, but no deep feelings. He also gives an advice to professional singers. Singers should not mimic, because mimicking is a quality of a student, and creativity is a quality of a master. Not much said about singing technique in his book, unfortunately. Giovanni Battista Mancini, 1714-1800, was an Italian soprano costrato, voice teacher, and author of books on singing. He speaks about separate registers, chest and head. Let's hear what he writes. Voice is usually separated by two registers, namely head, falsetto, and chest registers. I say usually because there are some examples of singers, though rare in nature, that are able to produce all the sounds in one register. So you see, he notices that some singers using one register singing back in 18th century, but they are rare. Position of the mouth is not the same for all singers. As opposed to Maestro Tosi, Mancini thinks that singing full voice at all time is not reasonable. So we see that one register singing was declining during Mancini's time, since it was called phenomenal, not usual. We go to French school. Jean-Baptiste Berard, 1710-1772, La Duchamp. He first talks about technology of breathing as low abdominal one. He also says that we can assume that vocal lips, he calls them cords, vocal cords, he calls vocal lips, can have different lengths, thickness and tension. Vocal lips are able to vibrate and form sounds. Air plays the role of the violin bow, and lungs and chest are the hands of the singer. When Italian opera became popular in the world, all other nations started to form opera houses. And one of the first non-Italian opera houses were open in France. Method of French Conservatory, founded 1803. Famous philosopher, and writer Jean-Jacques Rousseau states that French music of the 18th century required screaming. Mozart was even more critical about French singing. He wrote, French know how to appreciate singing, but their own singing cannot be called singing at all. Singers cannot be called singers because all you hear is throttle and nasal sound, terrible to the ear. After that harsh criticism, France decided to form its own school. French Conservatory was created in 1803 to teach French how to sing opera on the basis of Italian bel canto. They definitely improved French singers uh, by creating uh, an Italian bel canto type of a school but unfortunately, they introduced register singing as undisputed fact of a great technique. They said in their own principles, there are two registers for all voices and three for sopranos. For sopranos, they said chest, medium, and head. Head sounds should be directed to nasal cavities without causing nasality. For uniting register soprano transitions from chest to medium, chest voice should be reduced and medium strengthened. Connecting medium with head should be like this, strengthening the medium and reducing head register. For tenors is the same, except the tenors uh, by their understanding had only two registers. After that you see the decline of one timbral singing 
or appoggio in many national schools. Let's skip that period and come back to Gilbert Louis Dupré. Gilbert Louis Dupré writes, there is no vocal student who doesn't notice that at a certain point his voice experiences timbre change. Teachers around offer rounding the passaggio notes. I instead offer to extend their chest voices. He proposes covering, but not only at passaggio, but the whole voice like Italians do. In France, he says, we call it voix sombre. In Italy, they don't even use this expression because best Italian singers use that technique as a rule. Many think that Dupré was the founder of the Voix Sombre or Chiaroscuro as we know it now. Coming back to 1555, Maestro Zacconi mentions chest voices capable of singing the whole range with one voice. Now the very important figure, Manuel Garcia de San. Uh, let me give you his main principle, ideas. Number one, he was an advocate of diaphragmical breathing. Number two, heart sound attack. Number three, mandatory rounding and covering of passaggio and higher notes. Number four, mixing registers. Number five, lowered larynx position. He also mentions that darkening or covering the voices is more characteristic for darker voices, but he expresses one doubt. Maybe it's better for lyric voices, for more brighter voices, to use covering also, because it makes voice less screamy. He also invented laryngoscope and looked upon technique from the biological point of view. Again, for some reason, he calls falsetto a medium or mixed voice and brings another terminology confusion. Attention, attention! When one reads a vocal book, it has to accept the author's definition of the terms. And if we have only book without clear definitions, we're gonna be confused even more. Garcia mentions that one cannot become a skillful singer without mastering support. And here, all the singers who oppose diaphragmical appoggio may rest because Maestro clearly speaks about advantages of diaphragmical support in comparison to just abdominal one. He says, to suggest only abdominal way of support would mean to cut your breathing in half, reducing power in half. Moving to Francesco Lamperti, 1813-1892, his famous expression in Italian, appoggio il tuono sul fiato, perché il fiato è la sedia della voce. Before him, almost all the schools agree that the passaggio points are the same within the fach, within the same category of voice. He disagrees. He says, the opinion today that we can find an objective point for passaggio for every voice is wrong. The structure of every voice machine is different even within the same category. Francesco Lamperti. Anyways, Lily Lemon, 1848-1929, great singer herself, uh, I would say vocal intellectual. She, at the beginning, was an advocate of abdominal way of breathing, so-called breathe-in technique, later right at appoggio way. She noticed that there is no such thing as objective sound for singer. Singer should not try to send his voice at a certain point in space, but rather master his own sensation. And she was absolutely right, except that she she thought that these sensations are universal within the Fach, the same voice category, and created pseudo-scientific chart of sensations that, for strange reasons, encouraged placement of uh, multi timbre technique to be spread all over. Not her wish, obviously, because she clearly stated that she believed and sang with one register. 
Maybe it will be interesting for Sopranos to know that Lily Lemon, in her own words, at the beginning was pulling abdominals in uh, for 25 years because she realized limitation of that type of breathing and eventually came to Apoggio. Paradox with Enrico Caruso is that he was probably the most accomplished one timber chiaroscuro apoggio practitioner. Nevertheless, he mentions that three voice registers are natural to human voice. He doesn't give any explanation why. I guess he just accepted a certain position that was before him. He also mentions that he is opposed to some teachers, especially French ones, trying to improve resonance, placing it in the nose. Resonance can be only improved by natural means, whatever he means by that. Lauri Volpi and his Voci Paralleli. One of the greatest singers and theoreticians in his Voci Paralleli brings importance on vocal breathing on a new level, on a conscious level. He brings yoga breathing into vocal technique. He says, the most difficult and complete is the breathing where chest, diaphragm, and abdominals participating simultaneously. He understood clearly how much confusion those empirical schools bring to singing. And he instead offers the dominant empirical methods should be replaced by truly scientific ones. He goes also against the common understanding of covering at the time. And I guess he is correct in the sense because I totally agree with him. He says one should not close his voice, but rather not open in the passaggio area. One of the confusions that comes with covering, that covering suggests some kind of a change. Few people understand it correctly and they do it right, but most and the majority of them, they don't do it right. True apoggio is when you do not cover or you cover all the way using chiaroscuro sound. Beniamino Gilli was a great singer. Uh, he was not an intellectual, but he had great insights on vocal technique, more than some intellectuals in this field. Beniamino Gilli mentions when he asked by Magda Oliviero how he covers his voice, he, he said, I don't cover it, I support it. To my point is the amazing insight from a great singer who goes against accepted rules of technique and says that all great vocalists were implying one register singing. And the last but not least, Jerome Hines, American bass. Jerome Hines was not only a great bass, American bass, and singer and coach. He was also an intellectual, a man with degree. He had degrees in mathematics, for example. We all know his book, The Great Singers on Great Singing, but few know his most important book, is The Four Voices of Man. He picks up different types of appoggio and insists that appoggio is not just Italian word for support. As Dupre noticed a century ago that Italians use different way than French or English. They support down rather than up. Word semantics also prove that support means direction up. Appoggio literally means lean upon, movement down. It's a book with lots of insights and politically incorrect statements against stupidity that is often takes place in the modern time vocal coaching. For example, I'll give you one of the interesting statements he makes, and I agree with that statement. Coaches of a German-American school have misconceived notions of how Italian vowels should be pronounced. In the German language, one does not sing in Italian open throat all, like in father, all vowel. It's not used in French. In fact, all the Italian vowels are produced with lowered larynx, resulting in vowel sounds that are not the same as those in French or German. In his book, The Four Voices of Man, in page 174, he writes, A few words about the coaches. 
Bear in mind that the American singer is fundamentally being raised under a German school. That is fine for Mozart, Strauss, Wagner, or any German repertoire, but it creates a serious problem with regard to Italian repertoire and the meaning of the word legato. You will find no accord between Germans and Italians on the subject, and I know from 58 years of experience in dealing with them. Any coach who will tell you that legato means getting as fast as you can from one note to the next with no vulgar Italian slurs is definitely of a German school. For example, he gives the mad coach Jan Baer. So, Jan Baer and I argued many, many times about the meaning of this crucial world and we could never agree. I knew that he worshipped Fausto Cleva as a conductor and one day the three of us happened to meet him in the hall. I quickly took advantage of the situation and asked Cleva to define the word legato. Why, he said. Legato means tied together. So it's a small portamento between the notes. The shock on Jan's face was unmistakable. To further complicate the matter, let me describe what happened one day when my wife, Lucia, delivered me the supreme put down in front of Franco Corelli by saying, let's face it, Franco, those Americans are just not born to sing legato. There is also a problem of singing in French on the opera stage. If you sing the vowels exactly as they were spoken, you will not be heard across the footlights. I remember when Edward Johnson produced Peleas and Melisande in the late 40s and imported the world's two greatest leads from the Paris Opera for the title roles. They sang French most intimately, as it is pronounced in speaking, well and good for small intimate theatres, but in our 3.400 seats auditorium they were inaudible. After two performances, the rest were cancelled. As a conclusion, I can give you a modern understanding of appoggio as it is. Appoggio is the vocal breathing technique that recognizes one natural placement as one register, regardless of the type of tone. The breathing work chest, diaphragm and abdominals participating simultaneously. Chiaroscuro appoggio uses diaphragm as the dynamic balancer of air compression. Diaphragm plays the role of the violinist hands because it is not only pitch controller but gives perfect dynamic control. With this technique, use of different registers is not necessary. Chiaroscuro is the sole register that religiously unites chest, passaggio and head into one. Call it trinity register if you like. And demands only support for that action. Oh.